That's right. Silence of the crickets. That's all we've been hearing. People all focus on the wrong thing. I keep here, coming here every week to tell you, tell you that. I know you're tired of hearing it, but until we stop doing that, until we get a handle on what's oppressing us, I have to play the crickets. And remember, this was all started really more from the fact that the United States government went extrajudicial. In other words, they destroyed your government. In other words, they don't recognize the judicial branch. And then the judicial branch before that was already taken over. And so we're living this big illusion, and we think we can complain ourselves out of out of our problem, out of our shackles. That's not going to work. And so I come here every week to try and explain to you all the different places we can throw in to start getting back into what we were supposed to do before they, they like let's say this time of year, they burn us out. And the way I've been watching this thing happen and been able to predict, if you will, the future of how it comes, it's all written in the the code what they're doing. It's all written down. It's not like they're doing it secret. Uh, There are certain processes that these people have circumvented. And this is just the ones that we can deal with. There's a whole other couple other layers that that we won't even, I don't even talk about because we're not even there the first one. Uh, That we can start to address it and get back into how we're going to stop some of the nonsense that we see. Uh, this broadcast is uh, BTWRLM278. And you can hear us at uh, Real Live or even on uh, recasts, broadcast at uh, rlmradio.xyz. And you can support a censorship free network, which has got another reprieve, another month. Thank you very much to the donor for that. We need to go better than that. If we really intend to do something, I think these forums can be tools, not just places to dump our, our souls into. Uh, we can actually put together some things that we need to do and work together to do it. But uh, Real Liberty um, Media, also uh, Grimner, uh, runs uh, does the back end for freedomsnetwork.com, and that's on the on the edge of going down because there's just no no support for it. No 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 funds go into just for the servers now, folks. This is the other thing. I mean, I do. I come here every week. I don't get paid for this. I just come to do it. And so there's, and Grimner does his, and other people do their thing, and other hosts put together their broadcasts, and we were barely hanging by a thread, it seems. And yet, there's a small, small core of people for RLM every year. They come together to keep RLM running uh, for another year. And so, this is not going to work the way it's been working. It's not going to work the way we, uh, we look at the world, we want to fix something, and then we just kind of give up because it looks so complicated. So, in, it's so intense, and I, I have to, I've told you before, they have a long decades of run-up of organization and implementation, and we have to barrel through quickly. And uh, we've done, I've done it. I've done a bit of it. I've got a good insight on it. So I come here to try and tell you all those little insights as I can, as I can find them. Uh, but, again, donate where you can, uh, help where you can, broadcast where you can. grimner has got a pl- bunch of uh, spaces on the broadcast network in order to get your word out if you've got a word to give. But that's not going to be enough even. Uh, you have to get to action. And that's what I say. We can talk all of what we want, but not, not acting in the proper ways is, is not going to, it, it gets us nowhere. It gets us down the road. And I, as we're seeing this, this time of the year, for those of us uh, that are in the areas, or, the, the policies have been in place for decades. The one I'm talking about here, well, I'll be talking about it immediately, is that it was established in 1995. It was a low bar for fire policy. And no, uh, no, we're so absent as a, as a society of people, our governmental people, and those of us that get into government and our decision makers don't understand the whole process, and we get pulled around by the nose, and we allow this nonsense that, that we see upon us. And I come along and see, hey, wait a minute, there's a, there's a, I see the better way here, Let's, why don't we do that? And I get, I get crickets. And then nationally, they say we're going to go extrajudicial, and I heard crickets. And then we wonder what we see out in the world is the way it is. And then I say, watch out, because that's happening to you. If someone's willing to do something out, outwardly, they're willing to do it to you. When it happens to be the government and those in the government, you should be interested in that. Do I like saying that to you all? No. Do I like to have to think about that? No. I'd rather think my utopia that I was told. Okay? But it's not, it's not like that at all. At all. In fact, they've they've set it up to where, again, they've, uh, as I say, the protocols of the elders of Zion, if you, you looked at it as your human frailty manual, 
you'll see some of the tools they use against you written right in there. They're telling you exactly how they're coming at you. And when I read that document, I've correlated what I saw in the laws when I was reading 30 years ago or so. In probably five years of research, I realized there was a correlation. I said, here's, here's one of the ways they're doing to everybody. And we don't know that. We're all duped and we don't know that. We're all clueless and we don't know that. And then we're apathetic on top of that's our nature, so they've, they've, they've amplified that. And then they handed us the internet. And they said it was social. And it's slavery, essentially. You slave to your own, your own uh, frailties again. But let me move into this uh, situation. I want to point out something here again. Those of you all listened, were, were concerned about a fire breaking out and, and not being handled. Or, or not, or, or the escalation of it, or being fed the fear of the climate change is causing more of these fires, and they're hotter, and all this other stuff. Well, the study comes out here to, to kind of show us maybe not, but I'm not even going to talk about that part because to me, climate change is a fraud. So I've explained how that is. I've explained the underlying premise for it does not exist. I also understand that it's part of the process that I've found is a method of destruction. It's a felony against everybody when implemented against people. And it leads into other things. But what it, I told you this is what concerns me, and I see this now, and have been for many years, is that this is used to cover up what we need to do as well. You get focused on this stuff, and it's not real, and you, but you think it might be, or even if you don't think it is, you still don't act on where you need to act in order to change the major problem. And in this case, we have the problem of fires and the propensity of them. And no, no matter what, what the experts might say, you're going to have a reality that's going on. You know, you're, I'm sitting over right now a thousand feet from a stage one alert area from a fire. Not a mile away is a stage three alert. As a matter of fact, you know, people are moved out. And this was a, it's not supposed to be doing this but until you start looking at the 1995 Forest Policy, uh, Forest Fire Policy Act, the national one. What I tell you is the low bar now that I've done the analysis of it. It's the low bar set where local jurisdictions don't have a bar or an inadequate one as the way I look at it. Now, they're not going to tell you that, but that's the way I see all the exceptions. Like I look at for savings clauses, there's savings clauses in that policy for local authority to determine what the needs are, just like NEPA, just like coordination, just like all this stuff. So your answers are sitting there. If, if you wish to be part of a, a, the solution, if you can use their words, it's not a solution because it's not, nothing's perfect. But it gets us better into not being led by the nose on other things like this thing called climate change. And they blame the forest fires on all this other stuff. And I've been looking at this for over 10 years specific in this area. And I can tell you, yeah, it's man-made, but it's not M-A-N-N -N made. No, this is man-made. This is the people making policies on how are not making the local policy to help stop a lot of this. Will we, if we get this perfect, does it stop fires? No, because nature is uh, pretty awesome. What it does do is it establishes a condition that those fires cannot become into the condition that we now see them. And we are not, oh, no longer living in the policy that says you will live with fire as a tool. And so here we have a climate change not seen increasing wildfires. This is an international body that looked at it. I don't know if any of you have been paying attention to Greece. I, I look at all these things because at some point you've got to look and see a, the dynamic of a fire so you understand it. And uh, that, that plays and informs me about how I'm going to respond and how I'm going to suggest to people uh, see to decision that have a policy to make and have the power to make that policy what I may tell them. I work with my colleagues to work out the problems. Like right now, you'll see the underneath the federal 1995 policy, which has been amended. It's not the only 95. It's been amended, but it's all the same policy. It's just been amended actually to make it worse from the standpoint of using fire as a tool, even in summertime. You have to understand the insanity. When you finally read these words, that they actually think fire is a tool in, in the driest and hottest time of the year, then you realize you're dealing with insane people. You also notice, and a colleague of mine did hear it, and he finally heard it, uh, the word restoration tied to fire as a tool. And you'll see in that fire policy, you're going to get used to using these fires. This is a fire as a tool, and you are going to have to get used to that. And so th when you see that they tie restoration to fire, you realize you're dealing with an a lunatic. 
And this is a national policy now. And this is what all the politicians will push, restoration with fire. And that's the wrong definition. As I tell you, they use the wrong, the wrong application. You don't, uh, let's look at the rationale here, if there is one to look at, uh, to get back to some other thought. What rationale can you actually use? Where are you going if you use fire as a tool? What does the fire do that the, when it gets done, is, is it restores? What's it restoring something to? But ashes. Ashes and cinders. So right off the bat, if we sit back and think about it, fire is not that kind of a tool. Well, in the fire suppression realm, the, what you're dealing with, fire is not a tool for restoration. It's, it's a tool at the proper time for fuels reduction. And that typically comes in the fall. And if you're really good at what you're doing, you wait to the, in areas that can work, you wait till a, a good snow, four inches or so, and you start a fire then, or you wait till it gets about eight inches, and then you start an underground, an under, uh, under snow fire. And th those are planned to burn all winter. It's pretty fascinating what they actually know what to do. And by spring, it's all put out, and all the water from the snow comes in. The snow actually insulates the fire, and it burns underneath, and it doesn't go to these cat catastrophic fires, and you burn your fuels. That's being fire as a tool. It's not used as a tool when you use it in the, for restoration in the summertime. What you're restoring is not the forest. You're destroying the forest. And you think that you can use fire to use to control fire in the hottest and driest time when all your assets are fighting other fires uh, to to make to make a um, a restoration of the forest is insane. There's just no possible way you get there. And yet this is the policy everyone lives under. And so what I've been looking at is uh, what do we do for local policy? And there's a whole different, in 20 years, it's like 20 years, it's people have gone stupid. And I don't understand where that, where that, how that happened. There's a certain methodological approach that you make take to fire, uh, and it's not guaranteed, but it certainly is a whole lot better than, uh, than what we're doing. And we prove that, and we can see the distinctions. It's been identified, at least uh, around areas that I've been looking, only the forest service for fires are really the largest and, and, and continuing. And the BLM, another federal agency, doesn't have that problem. You have to wonder why. And what's interesting is you'll see in the, in one, in one state, the, the state for, works to fight the fires for the BLM and they don't for the forest service. And here we bring on the idea of local knowledge and local experience. But I want to, it's even bigger than that. So we talk about the climate change, and they talk about what's, they'll tell you that it's man-made, and I'm telling you, yeah, it's not Michael man-made. This is man, these are policies by people that are causing this trouble that other people, you, that live in those locales, need to step up, need to get educated. If you want to do something, you go educate yourself, and then you educate your local politicians in the, in the seats of decision. And it's not just about the fire as a tool for restoration. See, the restoration they're going to do, the climate change comes from sustainable development. That's a felony against all of you. So if it's the source is a felony, it just can't get any better. And so the, the, the fire is set up to do what? Restore the wild, not restore you, not restore your life or your society. And so you have to take control. I told you the plan their pro our problem is their plan, and they're the ones with the plan. And if you don't have one, you're probably going to lose. And so what do we talk about right directly in those that word plan, but you have land use plans. If your local organizations, the, the jurisdictions, don't make the plan, raise the plan the high, to the high bar of need of the local area, you're going to see the same destructions that you're seeing today. We have the direct now proof if I didn't need if I didn't if I needed it this year between the two same federal agent I mean federal agencies in other words same jurisdiction in the federal one doesn't have fires and the other one does one seeks out of uh, ad hoc out of state fire firefighters and the other one doesn't one wants to think it can use tool the tool of fire during the summertime and the other one doesn't. But we have an other d dimension that's working on, and that's not that you even have... See, fire suppression and fuels reduction starts with what? Proper management of the timber, right? And this is the other side of the problem. And this is where the sustainable development will not cut the timber. This is why Forest Service's uh, lands burn up. They don't want to cut the timber. They want to get you out. 
They want to burn you out. And the more fuels there are to do that, then the faster that's going to happen. And I told, I've, I've, re- I've talked to you the dynamic last year of Sonoma County. It's happening again up in Redding. But this is not just because of the, the fire. Lightning will start, uh, start fires, and they'll they'll continue to go. But there used to be a policy that you put them out real fast. There used to be a policy that you har- harvested timber, and you and you dealt with the slash correctly. Now there was a better improvement that could be done there. But the industry for timber that was maintaining what sustained yield of forest products. Maintain the fires and the roads and the and the setbacks and everything else. In fact, there was at that time the agencies would actually go and, as I was reminded this morning, they would go and clear the brush for, from the sides of the roads as well, as well as maintain some of the roads. But something flipped on its head, and because none of you all kind of understood that or paid attention, you're now receiving all this danger and smoke, these flashover fires that are much hotter. And so I see these climate changes not increasing wildfires, and then they say that the amount of big fires has reduced, reduced every also, but what they haven't looked at is why, who's really at fault here, and where are those fires? Those fires are right at the urban, they start and they interfere with the urban rural fire lines, right where you look at the 1995 policy that says those urban areas are going to live with fire. How insane is that statement? And yet no one's gone back and read the basics and moved it forward. Well, I can't say no one because I have and my, my colleagues have. And we're trying to analyze what's the answer now. And really what it is is you've got to find out your own policies on how you're going to fight the fire and set them. And so why we live with this is our own problem. Because it now looks like we can prove one agency at least is an arsonist or the accessory to an arsonist. Whether that's a natural cause or not. In California, you go down, you found out if you looked at last year's uh, the fire statistics, Pacific Power and Electric was the cause for most all of the fires. And so what does Jerry Brown do? He calls, he gives the Pacific Power leniency. He, he calls climate change the cause, and he asks for federal money. Now, it may be needed because these costs, these fires are expensive, but see, if you're doing proper harvesting, that would be one measure of removing and remove, do it properly. One measure of removing major fuels, and in the process, you make you remove the the understory fuels. And over a quick time, as they did back in the 70s, you have a fairly manageable forest with fires that don't last so much. And guess what? Did you miss the point? When you get the harvest, you're actually getting revenue in, aren't you? Which they don't do. There's also been now uh, work we've been doing for quite a long time is now being picked up and now being spoken. I've noticed the articles now talking about this being a problem. Uh, what's interesting is in one article they referenced the Western Governors Association. Folks, that's an enemy. That's a, a group that works for the governors. It works in Washington, D.C. They have their own situation going. And while that, that is where the policy comes out that causes a lot of this stuff. And now they're having to see the fact of it because we've been pushing hard. Uh, they now have to like take the banner and th- make it look like they're leading the way. Well, that's another div- diversion, and, and that's another d- uh, tactic as well, because once they, you think that they uh, have got the answer, then they aren't going to give you the fulfillment of that answer, and you go back to sleep about it. As I keep telling you, that's the amoeba. It keeps working to get you to lull, uh, lull yourself to sleep. So here's a, a discussion if we wanted to engage the fact of the discussion that climate change could exist. They talk about a whole bunch here in this article. They talk about the fact that there isn't any increases when you look at it. They have a, there's a lot of some holes in this study as well, but and they don't start talking to actual causation. They just say that there's actually the fear mongering they talk to here, uh, trying to attach climate change to something. I'm telling you that you even think that's a possibility and don't look closer. You just think that there's nothing that can be done because now you think, oh, it's declining. Well, those of you living in fire areas, it's not declining. You got to you got to risk every year, don't you? And the way we, it came out again, we had uh, local firefighters fighting a fire. It was fine. It was you know it was uh, it was it was starting up, and they were just trying to get control of it. And then the Forest Service stepped in, and everybody predicted that the thing would blow up as soon as the Forest Service took over. They were starting to get a handle on it, and the Forest Service took it over, and in fact, it has blown up. Why? You know, there's a whole bunch of reasons why. And so 
we want to complain about fire and we want to, you know, I don't, I'm not so much into the directed energy weapons, guys, those of you that are out there. There's a whole big problem behind all that. When I can see underneath, there's a whole other, whole other reason for why this is going on. And if I start to get onto those more um, wild ideas, we miss the point. How about if we solve the problem on the ground and then we, you know, then we see whether or not there's going to be a directed energy weapon? Whether or not we have to surmise whether or not a, a lens flare, a beam lens flare is, is, is an energy weapon or that you just realize that lenses do that under intense light. And so that's an anomaly to the picture. Do you fasc, fascinate and spectacularize over that or do you sit down and say, well, this has got to stop? And so what happens, even if there was a DAEWs out there, directed energy weapons, and you had your ground situated at class one, they, uh, they wouldn't matter. They'd, uh, you'd have to be watching those, uh, those beams coming down to hit everything they wanted to burn. Why? Because you'd have enough of the ground set up so that it wouldn't burn on its own. That's what a class one fire area is. It's set up so it won't burn. It starts, and it starts burning, but it burns itself out. Your forests are set up at class three. That's catastrophe. I've already discussed all this. It's on the Jefferson Mining District website, the map. All the red is a viola fiduciary breach of the federal government. Why isn't anybody attacking all that? I don't need climate change. I don't need any. I don't even think climate change can be real and it's not the cause. I guess let's put it that way. And so we don't, we are our own, our own worst enemy. And we're likely the ones that are complaining the, high, the, lead, the most and we're also not doing much about it. And all it takes is a few people doing the right thing in the right way. And so I don't know what to be at that point. I just want to shut up because that uh, when's everyone going to step up into what they can do? I'm, I'm blown away at how much talent and skill and knowledge is out there and, not, and being wasted. And only, uh, I've got a, I only have a handful of people I work with, so we can only go so far so fast. And it's not a direct route. I guarantee that. There's a lot of misunderstanding. Again, the cluelessness, the misunderstanding, the lack of apprehension, the lack of ability to understand. There's just some people that don't understand fire. I don't know why, but that's uh, it's out there. For some reason, I have it in me to understand some of this stuff since I was young. And I happen to work with people that also understand uh, the same thing and are are educated in it. They're the ones that had the they're the papered people. They're what you would call an expert. And we can talk, I can talk with them like I I have no problem talking with them. And if I can do it, I suppose without any training, I suppose there'd be a whole lot of other people just like me out there that should be able to work with that and go work with people that can solve this problem. And we get on, get on beyond, even if there was climate change and even if there was hot air coming in at summertime. Guess what, folks? We, where I'm at, we're in the fourth season. It's August. I got two weeks, and it's going to go over 115 degrees here. That's normal. But all of a sudden, now climate change caused that? In fact, it's actually kind of cool right now, so I'm not so sure about all this. But we got fires everywhere. There were a lot, most of which were nature-caused, and yet the ground was not prepared by either proper harvesting, proper fuels, essentially fuels load, uh, fuel loading management, and allowed to get larger than we can handle. And then you get foreign, if you will, foreign firefighters, foreign to the area, trying to come and figuring out how to fight a fire. You can't do that, folks. In the hilly terrain, that the, the mountainous terrain that, that uh, is out, out west, you have to know where everything goes. Otherwise, you get lost. And that's that's a killer, too. And this is what's going on. We're getting crews lost, everything. they got to be guided back out. They don't know the they don't know the area. They don't know the weather. They don't know the de the drowned. I'm looking at the sky. I look up at the high high altitude. I can, the major airflow is going one direction. I'm looking at the ground and all the smoke's going in the opposite direction. Why? So you couldn't look at a weather map and understand uh, how to predict where the fire would go to fight it if you don't understand the local dynamic. But here's the bottom line against that. The other layer underneath that is the management of that fire is management of fire, not stopping it. Using it as a tool. All right? So there it is. Now we're trying to use a tool that we shouldn't be using in the summertime. 
to burn you all out. And the forest policy says, you you folks in the urban areas, and that means all you folks in the rural, too, the, the derogatory rural, not the countryside, but the rural now, are going to have to put up with this tool. And the way this logic works is if all your local fire departments save all the structures, then the Forest Service takes this as a victory because they were able to use the tool and no structures. Nobody died and no structures were done. And so the urban learned to live with this tool as managed by the arsonist. This is how nuts this whole thing comes. And so, move on more. Climate change is being found not to be much uh, here. I, uh, that's no surprise. It's a fraud. So, that climate changes has got, I, I understand that. But uh, there's a whole lot of other deep dynamics in the United, in the, uh, in the, in the Earth uh, that, that are not understood that seem to have as, as equal an answer as to why we're seeing what we're seeing. And we're going to see it. It's not, this is not surprising either. But when we don't have the ground prepared, our management of the forest is, is such that it allows for catast catastrophe. Whose fault is that? Climate change? The frogs and the bunnies? No, they're the ones get, getting destroyed. And this is an this Forest Service agency is the one that's supposed to be under sustainable development, remember? And they're supposed to look out for the frogs and the bunnies, right? And the deer and all that stuff. No, no, it's not It's not what you think. And I've told you, when it stopped making sense, you better look closer and you better take an interest in it. Because in this case, fire doesn't care. It's indiscriminate. It actually discriminates kind of interestingly if you look at it. It's why everyone thinks there's a, there's a, a directed energy weapon on every house everywhere. Uh, it's how it works. Uh, fire is a very dynamic and interesting uh, uh, public enemy number one. It can do stuff that people just aren't, I guess they're not, not aware. But, uh, that's reality, and why, then, are we allowing environment, an environment that we have, men, men and women, have con control over to get to a, a catastrophic level of response in the face of ignition is our problem, and that can be solved locally. So any of you that are out there that are interested in this, I direct you to the 1995 uh, F National Forest Policy Act for federal agency ma fire management suppression, uh, actually living with fire, let it burn policy. Uh, read through all the amendments up and through last uh, two years ago, I think the last one came up. Get a handle on what you're doing and get an idea of what's actually supposed to happen. Go over to how the law says the, mount the forests and the land public lands are supposed to be intensively used and improved. And combine that together to go to your local uh, county uh, commissioners or your whoever, the fire people that are supposed to make these decisions, and explain to them what they are, find out their position, and start working out how this is not going to be the future. Because this is a, without that, you're going to get the future that's wanted by those that are the arsonists. And what I, I find that fascinating is that there's a way to take all this fire. You don't have, in a place you have fire, you're not going to have tourism. That's the very th the reason why they stopped cutting the timber was to increase tourism. Well, you can't have it when everything's smoked out. And so there's a real dynamic of discussion. You can lay a whole lot of harm and impacts, as I tell you, the impacts and the cumulative impacts on, on, on this issue. And you could, uh, you're on the right side of history then, as I can, is all I can say. And none of you stepping up, we're going to live with this. We're going to see homes. We're going to lots, and understand, as I told you, all the homes that get destroyed puts them into the next step on how those lands and those governmental controls come over the land. Increased fees, no insurance, you can't rebuild. They're going to put you under the code. You're going to be, they're going to redevelop and stack them and pack them. They're going to rewild the place where you like it. You're going to have open spaces now. You're not going to do much with your property. This is all a sustainable development being rolled down on your head. As I predicted, all of this is in there. there this is how the the the, the, uh, the 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 thing works. And so, I mean, it goes on and on. I could talk for probably days on just this subject. If I was more organized, I could talk for days and go right down the whole list of it. But if here I have may have waste of may I might have wasted here thirty minutes talking about it if none of you are interested. Oh, let my house burn. I got insurance. Yeah, well, that insurance is fine. I'm sure I'm telling you, it doesn't work. They're founding that out in Sonoma now. The government itself comes against you in trying to get yourself back up. They didn't care about the people burnout. And this was all in the forest plan. You will get, it's on you that you will learn to live with this fire. How insane is that? And no one stopped it. And that can be stopped. Now, let me give you a suggestion on how that might be stop, stopped. Uh, you, it takes a dynamic of investigation of the locale where you're at 
You want to look at the state foresters, uh, the, the state fire marshals policies. Hopefully they're better and they're, uh, they're better than the feds. And then you don't have to do that part. You just adopt those. But the locals would, would put down an ordinance that says that essentially, and it does not, it has to be said a little bit more formalized than this. Uh, but fire is a public enemy number one. And, uh, and every, anyone who finds it has the authority to, to take it out. And there's no liability for doing so. That's a thumbnail net nutshell law that you can pass. That used to be common knowledge, is what I just told you. It's like these laws now have to, I told you before, you're going to have to now put in, in ordinance and statute and code and, 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 and whatever you want to call it, the things that were known before that were normal. Because the new normal abandons all that. It's as simple as making... Uh, telling people they have the right to go put a fire out. And I've, I've told you over the years, a couple times in my life, I've had to do that on my own. They would tell you that you're trespassing, that you didn't have a right to fight the fire. They tell you all kinds of stuff. They want to think you get in trouble. If you know that's not the case, then you will still have to answer to the uh, state police that shows up. But they st- all of a sudden, at some point, they realize you know what you're doing. See, because fire is a dangerous thing and you can't let it get out of hand. And you have every right to go protect yourself and your society against it. And you are technically trespassing, but it's for a cause that the, the owner couldn't do. So the owner now becomes a problem. And when you understand the Forest Service and the uh, federal and any of the federal agencies on public land, public land, a particular public land, not public domain, public land, under their management authority is a proprietor like no one like everyone else then you understand that the liability sits there and they're not an authority and this is all starts to fold into understanding how to approach the problem locally so the local locality that you're living in makes an ordinance or law for people to do this anywhere and it sets the standard of law and liability so people can feel they can get back in the force and put these things out if you can tie it into the state fire marshal, you got Tenth Amendment power now. That's why you got to go through your county. They can do that a lot easier than you can. And so, do you do you whine and cry, or do you you roll your sleeve up and go figure out how to solve this problem for those of you that are subject to it? And I mean, fire is everywhere, so I don't know why this wouldn't be. When you live in a nation, the agencies of which have said you will live with fire as a tool to restore. A restore a restoration. You're living in a nation of lunatics. It's up to you to stop it. And so this is one of those clear-cut things we can that I always like to find. Anybody who wants to roll their sleeves up is be pretty well is a victory once you do it. But it's going to take people to do it. And those of us that are doing it that I know of, just maybe too few. And that said, we're not we're not too ineffectual either. We're doing doing like I said, we do okay. It's a lot longer than I'd like to see, but we're doing okay. In the face of having worse fires and in the case of of not having any scrutiny, now people are seeing it. We are sitting in the right position right now in history uh, to help aid people understand really the rudiments of this. I'm here to tell you about that. I did that earlier in this broadcast already. The 1995 policy is a low bar set where there's no policy. Inside that policy is is the... acknowledgement of local rule for its needs and that is what's in, in, in not happening it's the same thing that happened in coordination no local jurisdiction none would make a, a public land use plan a local land use plan regarding certain things and so the federal the federal government could ignore it and they go on their low bar policy which happens to be rewilding burning everybody out living with fire saying that the fire is a restoration tool. It's not, folks. It's That can't happen. But that's what they say, and that's what people believe, that they have authority to impose this. Well, that, that ends as soon as you have a local rule you can rely on, and then you have a local rule that also says that no one's liable for doing it, because that's the other hang-up. They want to come after you for doing what you're supposed to be doing. Remember, everything's inverted. So... Here's a, my whole thing on this climate change is not about this article on climate change. It's to remind me to tell you, and here you have a, you can go read through 
about how this works and all the things they talk about and all the lies that are being switched around. I want you to see this is another cover that they throw in that you don't fall asleep because now it's not climate change and you also don't buy in that it might be climate change because we have a different work. All this is noise. Because any of you that are living in the fire area, in the, near the forest or an urban area or a place where fire can come through. Remember what happened with this uh, meteorolo meteorologically, the stiff winds is what caused and fanned the fire problems with Redding. Okay, so that you have to, and then, uh, and then down south, they re that happened again to them. The stiff winds take you out. So there's really nobody that's safe from that. What you can do is pre-plan and pre-prepare, pre, um, pre-prepare for that eventuality and sit yourself in a condition where that catastrophe, the conditions of catastrophe are not there. Right now, that's not the condition in the in the West. And so this is something that everybody that's living in the West can do. Anybody who feels they don't want to smell the smoke no more, they're not going to eliminate it, but when you, when you can't see your hand in front of your face because they're, they're using fire as a restoration tool in the middle of summer, you have... You have you have a cause if you want to. And it's not going to be that hard really to figure that out. I'm amazed at how many people, how many minds have come together to say, what do we do? And they wring their hands and they continue wringing their hands. And the answer is right there. Now, what's interesting is you tell them and they still wring their hands. That's us, folks. This is our this is our fallen our fallen nature. We're, we're kind of, they did something to us. And I, didn't, I haven't figured what that is. Part of it didn't affect me. That part didn't affect me. And so I come along and I explain this, or my colleagues, well, we, we all work to explain this, and, and they look, everyone looks at you with your eyes crossed and say, well, how can you do it that way? How is that supposed to be? Well, it makes sense, but we're, we're powerless. What kind of a people have we become? So along the hidden theme that kind of developed this uh, sustainable development that's on you, Again, remember the Bar Association in their own internal documents, the House Delegates Resolutions, over decades have agreed to promote sustainable development. What am I saying? For those of you in the in, in, in the Europe, you already know it's called Agenda 21 because over there they told you what it was, but in in the United States they had to lie to them. So they didn't know there was a, a, a there was a United Nations connection. That's all right in your bar associate, your rule o law people that are making law and policy and making uh, the judgments against property owners. This is the felony that's going on, systemic felony. So what, it, what have I told you about all this problem? You talk about climate change. They talk about all, how, much, how much smoke and you know, carbon dioxide is going up into the atmosphere with these fires as well. Again, it stopped making sense. So maybe that's not really the plan. They have an ulterior plan. And the real plan is to get you out. Burn you out. But the sustainable development has many, many, many goals. I've read lots of them. Some of which are that Agenda 2030, the, the implementation of the many, many goals of Agenda 21 through to year 2030. And how, what was the main thing we talked about there years, what, a year or two years ago about? I, I pointed all this out. Was it 2015? Was the ultimate point about all that is it puts you into sustainable debt. And climate change was going to be one of those things they were going to use in order to get you to believe that that was the case. And they have many mechanisms that get you to buy into it, like I'm trying to show you in this last climate change is not causing your wildfires. It's, they try to get you to think it's okay because climate change is not doing it. They didn't remove climate change. They actually, at the article, start to agree that it exists. I'm telling you it's a fraud. But that, so that means that this whole article agrees that they use it as a as a as a foundation from which you to start your discussions, that they're going to continue to impose climate change. And you see this just about everywhere, that they're trying to move the new, the technocratic future on you. And I found it again, moving on into, the. I, I mentioned the fires, I mentioned the smoke and the carbon dioxide, I mentioned now what is left behind a, a, a fire that doesn't turn to sterilize the ground six feet deep uh, and leave ash, but it leaves uh, what? Carbon, right? And so we move into, that's what they're creating as well. And they justify the carbon uh, load by saying, well, there's carbon that stays on the ground now. It's not good enough that you can harvest it and put it in a house that lasts for hundreds of years. 
No, they're going to do it another way. They're going to do it and get you to believe that fire is a tool for restoration. And no one asks, restorating, how do you, the fire restores to what? And you forget to understand there's a, there's a real way you do it, and fuel, fire is used as a fuel reductions tool, not a restoration tool. But it's all underneath, again, this uh, agenda that's being pushed along. And I see these things everywhere, and I've told you about the technocratic future, and I've told you that the tech, this digital future is built for that, and that we have this thing uh, called a blockchain that they're going to attach things to that you're, you're going to embrace. You embrace it because it's got a lot of money involved, but they're doing it for control in the future. And keeping track, folks, is really the point of it. You register yourself, and you register to this unchangeable thing. It came out again, and uh, again, I've told you, if you read the you, the, U, the UN documents, you have to read about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way through before you get to the secret. And this has been pretty consistent. I haven't really found a, an error in this observation, and that's why I made it, because I, I started over years. I could see they kept talking, kept talking, kept talking, and then they got to their point about just past half and just, bef just, around, just before 80% of the document. Like if you look at the uh, human uh, the Declaration of Human Rights, you have to get to like three quarters of the way through before they actually tell you all your rights are subject to their central authority. But by that time, your mind is so numb reading all this stuff, you don't you kind of you, you gloss over, you just pass right by that. Well, this article does the same thing, which is kind of interesting to me. Blockchain and energy, we sifted hype from reality so you don't have to, as published by the enemy. The CF, the CF, um, our organization, Council for Rules, Regulators, whatever they are, Council for Policy, is not foreign. It's only foreign. It can never be local. It's foreign in the fact of its ad, its adjunct. It's it's globalist. So CFR publishes a document talking about blockchain tied to energy. Well, the basis of all life and modern life, if I can say modern, modern life is energy. And this is where they're, they're controlling all your energy. It's in your money, currency, your current, current C, not the Admiralty, no, the currency, the current that you use in your society is the money. Then you have your energy, uh, power electrical. All right, so they have they have both they have two very powerful things that they've now put you in that you need, and then they you notice they deny. But the point here, blockchain and energy. Uh, to me, I looked at that and I said, well, here here is the carbon market. Okay, let me jump to the end because I don't have a whole lot of time behind uh, behind the broad woodshed to talk about it. But we can go talk. They set it all up. Electric power systems around the world are rapidly changing. For over a century, these systems have relied largely on centralized fossil fuel plants to generate electricity and sprawling grids to deliver its end uses to end users. Uh, utilities had a straightforward objective, provide electricity with high reliability and uh, at all costs. But now governments have a new ambitions for electric power systems. Many are requiring these systems to rely heavily on volatile wind and solar power. Several are also aiming for a high share of electric vehicles, which can strain grids. Further complicating the matter, customers are installing their own equipment from solar panels to batteries and smart appliances to control their production and consumption of electricity. There's a whole lot right in there we could go through. I'm not going to go through it. Just understand they did admit that the solar and uh, the uh, green, so-called green, is uh, necess not necess is is not necessarily good, and it uh, agrees that it's not uh, reliable. Yeah, it also agrees that you're stepping up to try and step into, but it's over the consumption and production part, uh, which they try to limit in you. The point is they're giving you a dynamic in the first paragraph. That includes what? The smart appliances. So even when you go and do your own, you're going into their smart system. Why? Because it's an integrated system. And they say governments are doing this. Well, they're doing it through things like sustainable development, which the United States tied on to back in uh, Bush's time, I think 92, remember? They, they did, uh, they, they pulled it in as a policy. It's not a law. It's just this policy. And that's another thing you'll understand. It's not law. None of this is law. But they'll get you to believe it is. And this article from the CFR goes to explain the problem. They make some admissions in this article. It's pretty fascinating to listen. But 
to hear and watch uh, what they're doing. But I get down to what they said in there, getting rid of the hype and telling you what the answer is. And they give us uh, four peer, I mean, peer-to-peer transactions was one of the reasons, that the applications that they can use this, the peer-to-peer transactions. That's a, you can Your stuff communicating with everybody else's. It's, they want to make it sound peer-to-peer. Like, this is what the um, alternative people wanted. Oh, let's go peer-to-peer. Well, they're already ahead of it, and they're going to be making a, prom- a pitch for that, and you'll be familiar to it. You'll think it's your peer-to-peer, but it's actually their system's peer-to-peer. And this is the thing you have to remember. That system is the possessor. That's the problem with blockchain. Whoever possesses that and has it for their purposes, you're locked into that. That's why I say you got to figure out a way to privatize that blockchain completely. And I don't know if there's a way. I haven't really sat down and really think about it. There might be. But you have to privatize the system. And then when you do that, how do you re-engage with the, real, with the world that's this thing? Uh, this becomes a little bit bigger problem. Uh, so it's not about Bitcoin. I keep telling you, forget about that name. That's just a utility, a, a thing that's utilizing blockchain. Blockchain is a technology. It's just a ledger. Well, ledgers are tacked to, usually attached to Bing counters. And when you far, start reading through this, you'll start seeing this is system for blockchain and energy has to do with this, what they said, the government's control of energy. And there, so they have peer-to-peer transactions. They have grid transactions. They have energy financing. Folks, are any of you really into any of this at all? You'll find real quickly that this is not speaking to you. Blockchain in this in this application doesn't even speak to you. Peer-to-peer transactions, grid transactions, energy financing, and then we get to sustainability attribution, then electric vehicles, and others. Let me go back. Why did they even have sustainability attribution? When you look at this thing, there's a list of what we what did we have here? Uh, one, two, three, four five, six others, and it was sitting in position four, four six. And I say it's two-thirds? So two-thirds into the list, after 50%, you get, you get, you get what they're talking about. This whole, po- this whole thing that they end up talking about, they find to get rid of the hype and tell you how to use this uh, technology, is that this, is, uh, this is, will be regarding the sustainability attribution, one of the most immediate applications of blockchain to the electric sector is its use to record and trade attributes of sustainability, including whether a unit of electricity is renewable and how emissions resulted from its production. This could ha- this could help reduce friction, fraud, and errors while expanding the size of regional trading markets for attributes like re- renewable energy credits or carbon offset credits. If these projects can be scaled, if these projects can be scaled, governments might become better equipped to regulate carbon emissions and encourage the deployment of renewable energy. It's exactly what I've been telling you. They're running you down the primrose path through this acceptance of the blockchain and what the government will end up doing it for you. And everything you do when you get power is going to be connected through this. It'll have nothing to do with the rest of you, the rest of the things they have listed here. This whole article was to bring in what climate change is trying to get you to do. Agree that carbon is a pollutant and a damager to the environment that you cause, and so they can make this fraudulent carbon market. You all thought it went away. I heard that they said they were backing off on it, and then we found out it was just went back and got quiet because they realized some people were too much onto it in, in a way they didn't want so much exposure. This thing is still in play, and they're going to use blockchain to do it, and they're going to get right through your energy and get right to you. It doesn't, and it won't matter whether you produce it or whether you just use it. Whether they get you an electric car, which we find that are not so green. I keep telling you about all that. In fact, I think Volkswagen just got hit. Their cadmium batteries have to all be returned because they're just polluters. There's nothing that you can do in the world uh, that doesn't have a waste or a, a, a detriment if you change it from the nature. And this whole process is to trying to get you to keep it from being changed from the nature. Non-use. Non-use, as I've told you, is a war crime. If it, any other nation was to do this to another group of people. But because the UN's not a nation, then we just have a bunch of felons running around. 
trying to uh, trying to get you to uh, allow them to be a parasite in your life. So here we have a climate change fires. It's not about that. It's not about the fact that they're diminishing because they're not where you live and there's a fire. That's a serious problem. That'll burn you out. You have to solve that locally. So we're back to local response. Blockchain, this is a regional. They keep telling you. goes global. It's all connected. The ledger, the bean counters are involved on every every atom of carbon that you're going to be now taxed with is what the CFR.org group is telling you is coming with this technology underneath the scare of climate change, the fraud of it, the fact of the promotion of blockchain technologies. And I told you all this stuff, if you look at the fact of what's going on right now within the government, uh, they're attempting to do this to subvert your property rights. They're to subvert your, in, your non-dependence on that, aren't they? In other words, the whole system is... Well, because it becomes private, public, private, it's fascism. And as long as you keep quiet, they're going to get that. And let's get back to that fire thing. As soon as the local, the locality that has the problem asserts a higher bar that says you can't use this low bar against us and control us, you eliminate their ability to control you. So instead, like in Florida, where they start outlawing disconnection from the system on a fake situation, which I, as a bar member, you, uh, looking at their House resolutions as a member, they were going to do, and not having a counter for that, and allowing that as a, as a state, you've now given up the ability to defend yourself in the land use, and that brought you into their legalisms and the adjective. Law, a reflexive condition. It, and that's pretty simple how that works. So they're going to get you into this blockchain, but ultimately you're going to find out nothing in this list really attribute, uh, affects anybody until you got down to the sustainability attribution. Why was that even in this article? Why is it two-thirds of the way through the process? And like I've told you, to predict to look for it. And if I did find it, there aren't we seeing the correlation in the method? And then what they talk about is absolute control of your life. And then what does that do? That allows them to come up with all these fantastical Rube Goldberg type solutions that really don't do anything but cause a lot of make work. And I think I found one here all in the same week as I say, all this stuff kind of comes through in batches. Uh, but I started to understand, and I'm, I've been so far away from the, the planning, I'm having a little bit of trouble doing the math and all that, but it occurred to me that even if uh, in my rudiments of uh, dis distant understanding of all these technologies, which I'm not against solar, I'm not against wind, I'm not against all that, but there's a reality to the, those things. There's a pragmatism. There's a, an effectualness that they can bring, and they have their own problems. They all have their place as well. And what we're trying to see, we're seeing because of this fraud of carbon pollution in the environment that causes trouble, you're watching the rate additional regulations, additional taxations, additional costs. Everybody who's got a, any kind of wherewithal to jump in makes profits on top of that, and then your life is constrained, and you go into the shared prosperity or austerity. Because there's just not enough, they say. And when we look at the systems they put in, you, there's no doubt why. This story came up at the same time. What's connected up with these, uh, this carbon market is the fraud of saying that there's a green way to produce this stuff. And you can use your electrical vehicles. And I always say, what are you going to plug them into? Where does those battery power come? Everyone thinks a battery gets made and it's a magical device. But no one realizes that they, they do it and they know they have to do it, but they don't realize that, that it has a continuing function where you have to recharge it from where. And they're going to claim here that they can do this on renewable energy. And then, and it's not efficient, it's certainly not efficient, it's not green, it's not without its own problems, without its own production, without its own infrastructure needs, without the space it takes, which is what I'm getting to here in this next project idea. But they come up with Rube Goldberg ideas that private-public partnerships are created in order to pull this off. And this is what ties in. You hear Harry Reid over in Nevada wanting to do solar farms, and they want to take out a, produ a producer uh, in, in, uh, in, in, all the, in all the ranches, not just Clive and Bundy, but all of them, to put in a, a solar farm. That's not green. That did not impact a bunch of lives. 
It absolutely impacted lives and production. And it takes up land. You want to preserve the land and restore it to wild? How are you going to do it with a bunch of solar panels on the ground? How are you preserving the birds that get knocked out of the sky from these rotors that are going around and around and around? So we can myopically look at, oh, how great this is, or we can look at the reality. Again, I'm not against any of it. I just it's, it has to. It all has a proper place. I'm not against using fire as a tool, but let's use it as a tool, not as a not as a weapon. Let's use it safe and sane at least. And and maybe let's how about cost effective? Let's let's put some reality to some of this. But here's a Rube Goldberg idea. I thought, well, it's really neat how they do all this, but. People aren't. I don't think people pay attention, and this ends up going in and the excuse of climate change and carbon to, de, to develop a carbon market, and they tell you that they're going to do this stuff green, and oh look how great this is. Uh, the three billion dollar plan to turn Hoover Dam into a giant battery. And what this idea is for all of you physics majors out there, they want to take water that they get they get down at the bottom, and they want to use a solar power farm or a wind power farm to pump the water back up above the dam and let it back out so they can generate power on the times they need it. They want to take $3 billion and build solar power and wind farms sufficient to do that. And they call that a battery. Does anybody understand there's losses at every step of the way here? Major, major losses on how to do that? Has anybody thought of the acreage it's going to take to put a solar panel farm to be able to do that? Why wouldn't you just build another dam? The original dam, in, I think in 2008 dollars, the last time I saw, cost $690 million. Okay, it cost a billion dollars to put another Hoover Dam in. And you get out of that 4 billion kilowatt hours a year, I think it is. It takes up some 291 square miles of space to do that. You know how much land would be taken up just to do solar power to do that? If the calculations I did and then I could find in cooperation with that are correct, I don't even know if we, there's enough space to do that on the, on the land that they're claiming they want to keep for turtles. You're dealing in megawatt systems, a couple hundred megawatt solar systems. The Hoover Dam puts out 4 billion kilowatts. <laughs> it drives three states with electricity. Yes, it took up some land. Have you ever thought about how much land is going to be covered over by solar panels in order to put to to match just what water does? And yet they call that viable. This is just one big Rube Goldberg machine to me. Yes, it will work. Yes, you can pump water up. You can store it. You can run it back through your system. What's the cost, though? Oh, they admit that these systems are so in inefficient. We can't use solar in the dark, and we can't use wind when there ain't none. But when there is, we can pump a bunch of water uphill. That might work, folks, when there's nothing else. In fact, I know there's a train system that works kind of interesting. They use the solar power or wind power to charge batteries to drive a unit up. And then on the on the train, they got to haul some stuff up. They have stuff they put on it. And when it comes down, they have big generators on this train. And it generates the power, augmented because there's losses, back into the system. And they can move that train up and down the hill for near nothing. But that's a closed system. What they're trying to do here is they end up using these Rube Goldberg machines in order to do carbon offset taxation profits. Has nothing to do with power. It has nothing to do with efficiency. It has nothing to do with reason. It has to do with playing a taxation game, a fraudulent taxation game that the government's agreed to. And so we start buying into the surface stuff or denying that it exists. We become the skeptic and heretic. 
and we stopped there, we missed the we missed the play. We missed the game. And when we miss the game, we will get hurt. We will get hurt whether or not it's a taxation on our out of our pocketbook or maybe our house burns. Oh, I have insurance. And then you find after the fact, well, I have insurance, but they're not going to cover it all. And the government's going to now charge me more. And I'm going to have to tie on to this smart system. Otherwise, I don't get my new house. And the smart system is looking at you being a carbon emitter that you end up being taxed for as well and controlled. Remember, these smart things are not so intelligent. They will be used to tax you more and control you. And more importantly, cut you off. You have no, you're all, it's again, interdependence. So things of the UN we find are not very good. And I can just tell you, when you look at the law side, it's all not law. That's why. It's all this policy idea. It's a, it's an invasion. It's an occupation of your life. It's not consistent with law. And the antidote to things that act not consistent to law is to bring law. That's why I say we may only have one tool, and it's the law. It's the objective black and white that's been written so we can use it. And as I've, our experience shows, wherever we bring that, it, it eliminates, it just destroys this whole condition. And if you keep quiet on that, if you don't know your laws, or you say they're no good, or they're illegal... They're going to use that against you because you're not in action. They are. And you're not going to be able to stop any of it. And you're not. As I look around, why I play crickets. I mean, there's not enough people doing what's supposed to be done. And they don't make it easy. It's not like there's, I keep telling you, there's no silver bullet. They don't make it easy. Why would you think they make it easy anyway? Makes no sense. They want to make it as obscured and transparent to you as possible. And I, I truly believe that no one will admit it to us, but I think they wonder, how the heck did you figure that out? What we get is, well, you're still here? How are you still here making this argument and killing us on this stuff? Well, people like you usually go away by now. Which tells you two things. They're not listening. We're still there. It's still a problem. But they don't have an answer. And we're really close to, the, to flipping the switch there against it. Because now we've got them, acknowledging that we are still there. And so this is the persistence problem. If you have to persist, it means that it's not going away. There's no silver bullet. It means that you have to be vigilant and active against the oppression. So that, again, once you get into this, you start realizing the reality of it. You look like it's a long-term problem. Then you might reset your mind about how what it takes in order to defeat it. And maybe why it continually looks like a fool's errand that we might actually be winning. I don't know. More and more people are slowly getting it. More and more people, more importantly, are taking correct action once they get it. And so I come here every week to tell you about that. Try to tell you in different ways. Try to give you different insights. Try to show you how to look at some of this stuff that's maybe not so apparent. And today I'm on the, it's not on the first two levels. It's maybe the third level that they're beating you on. And so until you start doing, if you, if you stop at any point until you dig to the bottom of the problem, that's where it festers and, and it, it keeps going. Remember that fire I told you you can throw underneath the, about an 8-inch snow, snow bank and you can put a fire in and it'll burn all winter and it burns safely and it, when it gets done, the water drains because it warms up and springtime's hit, puts all the fire out. Yeah, that kind of thing goes on. They burn inside your system. They burn out your system. They burn out your country. They burn out your laws. They burn without it. It's completely transparent to you. Like those coal fires they can never put out. They go out for hundreds of years. They started, they can't put them out. I don't understand that, but that's the way it works. That's what's going on in your country. You want to get into all this stuff about Trump or the Democrat, whatever, the liberal, Republican, Democrat, uh, whatever your opinion is on an ism, on a ist, they're going to beat you. They're going to beat us every time. And where we throw that off, we stop identifying with all that, we call that out to be, in the minimum, in the minimum, a joke, an illusion, a fallacy, and not a crime, in the, in the, in the minimum, that someone's just putting that in your face, and you just disregard it. And then you go out what's supposed to be done. We defeat that at every turn. So far we've defeated it at every turn. 
Doesn't mean it goes away, but we don't we're not looking at the same problem then, are we? So as long as you're listening to information and you even disregard it, but do nothing more when you still have the problem, you think by disregarding it it solved the problem, you you're mistaken. You're mistaken in your own thoughts. There's just no way that the problem goes away because you disregard someone's opinion about the non-cause of it. The non-cause of fires doesn't mean that you've solved the problem of fires. And I'm here to suggest to you strongly to look very carefully at the dynamic of what's going on. It has a pathway. It's discernible. It doesn't take any opinion to figure that out. That's the interesting part. You start realizing... You're on that path when you're not having to use your opinions about it. It's pretty called what they call self-evident. And then you're dealing in the realm of illusion, and what they're doing, you're dealing with, is a bunch of uh, snake oil salesmen. If, if that's if, I, if that's that innocent, but I think these people are criminals. So they're not just not a snake oil salesman. People mean to hurt you, and yet the clues are around to out that and to defeat it. Uh, moving on to more of the things that we've been, I've been talking, you know, talk about pretty regular uh, behind the, the woodshed here. Just always on and on. It's almost like it sounds like it's completely repeating. Well, the subject matter is, and our ineffectualness, our lack of action is, but I come here to tell you that no, even though this is repeating, we have another opportunity to stop it, another opportunity to call it, another opportunity to recognize beyond opinion that things are going on, and that those things need to be decided on whether or not we want them around us. If it comes out as I've heard, I told you I attempted to do back in 2000 to ex, to uh, expose the problem. Uh, now it comes out, and, and this is what it partly about the problem of uh, the cops not being outed for their abuses of uh, to people. It stays in the system. The systemic protection it sits there that needs to be opened up, and we now see some more. UK Parliament publishes full 2002 UN report on sex for aid in West Africa. And so here we have the government of the United, United Nations holding back a very important piece of information about the UN, you know, the white hat, the, uh, the blue hat, it's supposed to be the white knight out there doing everything. And I've told you that all these aid, these, ne these non-governmental organizations that work with the, with the um, uh, governments generally and the UN are no good. We talk about this all the time. I have in the past, not recently, but I talked about all this in the, in the past. But we see it again. A groundbreaking UN re, nation, United Nations report compiled in 2002 never saw the full light of day until now. And I, I say here, again, whenever I say here, you're going to have to research. Get the link. Uh, get the links to the links. And go read them if you're interested. And find out where you want to throw in on this. Don't take my word for it. Don't even take this word of this website. Go get those documents and read out what it's supposed to be. I'm going to take the surface of this because it comports with what I've told you before on what I found. Uh, and I've and it's a principal thing that we talk about, and it says it differently. It says it. It admits it in, in this article uh, that these, as I tell you, are the felonies against us. Something coming under a color of authority that does your harm as a crime is in this in this article. This is what they do. Again, exposing and confirming what I've been telling you about the fraud against us, the crime against us, the color of authority, the chameleon that comes to warm and fuzzy, help you out, that wants to stab you in the back. And when they start using words like, oh, we want to restore the forest, and they're using fire, you know you're dealing with a psychopath. And that's time you better take cognizance of that and do it, but you better act, otherwise that psychopath may hurt you. The UK Parliament recently published an entire document which details the sexual exploitation of refugee children by those distributing humanitarian aid, in quotes, humanitarian aid, as well as peacekeepers and personal, personnel in positions of power in crisis-affected areas. Now, you just change some of those words, peacekeepers and personnel's positions in power, is your consensus process, folks, so that you, you are living under already. I come to in peace. I come to, uh, to in consensus, to dialogue you into consensus, an agreement of a, of a nice way to resolve uh, our problem with you. And I'm sitting in the power position to make the final outcome determination is dispute resolution. 
is this statement, peacekeepers and personnel in positions of power in crisis-affected areas. Those crisis, crises are fabricated by climate change to bring on the outcome they want. This is the method right in this article. However, I, I actually I may have heard that this, this website, you have to be careful on their information, but the principles they're talking about, I'm going to agree with. I don't have to worry about whether or not they're scamming me on this. I know I'm reading the truth on this article. People, this is, what they're saying here is usually transparent to people. It's what I've been saying for all the time I've been broadcasting. They come as a cover. They come with a, with a costume. And we give over into that. We agree. William Roberts was excellent to identify that. And then he said, become vocal local, because the only way you can do it is know your, know your, your needs locally. I understand it through a lot of other places. It's all the same answer on answering to this fraud. The publication of a summary version of the report caused a global furor in 2002, eventually leading to some policy changes. Eventually leading to some policy changes. However, these efforts have proven woefully insufficient in light of the ongoing scandals, including but not limited to the recent Oxfam debacle, Zode's Ark scandal, allegations of horrific sexual abuse, and in the Central African Republic by UN forces and the Laura Sisbley uh, incident. All of these cases and many, many others occurred after the partial publication of the UNHCR report pointing to one unsavory conclusion. Aid work is not a vehicle of charity, but is in very, in a very real sense, a cover for atrocity. It is a weapon, a blunt instrument of power that is wielded to exploit the most vulnerable populations in crisis around the world. We can now state that sentiment as fact, not opinion. That is your money paragraph for your existence in this life today. Charity now, these NGOs, the UN itself, government. I'm here to help. We're from the government. We're here to help you. Is a weapon, a blunt instrument of power that is wielded to exploit the most vulnerable populations in crisis around the world. What did the UN do but go right after what? I say it and repeat it over and over. Those of you that listen to me should be burning it out already. They go after what? The most vulnerable people, they claim it right up front. The women, the children, and the indigenous populations. There's your money paragraph, folks. The cover of charity now. Think about everywhere in the world that looks like charity. And I can't put everybody in this, but I would say put 90% of everything you see as an official charity Working in the world for good, just go look at Syria if you want to see a lot of those guys. Humanitarians, they're a weapon, folks. It's exactly how I look at this when I'm talking to you about what we're up against. This is a war. This is a global war. They use your own hardship against you. What did I show you in A2030? It says it right in there. They'll, the the country that's the exodus country to the receiving country, both countries will profit because of the forced migration. And what are they going to be put into, from or to? It goes back to the money, goes back in to develop, redevelop the, 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 the crisis nation up to what? The new standard of austerity, isn't it? More servitude, more sustainable debt. Sustainable in the sense that you're going to be under carbon tax fraud. You're going to be under climate change fraud, under food security fraud, under any all the frauds they say they're here to help you. We're from the government. We're here to help you. And it may not be the government. It may be a public-private partnership. Uh, for those of you that know that, like, that appreciate the 19, uh, the Title 42, 19, USC 1981, Title 42, USC 1981, I want you to go down. I think it's C. Go read that. Now look very carefully at what they talk about non-governmental agencies. Pretty fascinating what's been written for 100 or so, 150, 60 years. But aid work is not a vehicle of charity. From the government, we're here to help you. Yeah, aid work is not a vehicle of charity. It's a, and a cover for atrocity. 
Everyone, I think, would agree with this when you hear it's phrased like this. When you look around what government does and what the aids of government do and what the uh, corporations under government control can do or will do. They're weapons, folks. And if you don't get this, you're not getting what the power is and the problem. Anyway, I, this one spoke pretty clearly to me. This article was, that that couldn't be the more truer statement of what I talk to you all the time and have talked to you. And once we say that, we then can't go to sleep. A lot of you will, but we can't. I mean, it's, well, or I guess to say if we do, what do we, what would we expect? And what, what value is your complaint anymore then? You whiner. So it finally comes out. The problem I told you before, why something I was doing in 2000 was so hard to see for people. I saw the systemic cover-up. It's been coming out. I could predict like the, the child abuse, the sexual child abuse. I could tell you. I could show you as I did. I explained it. Ends up over there in the UK. I said it's global. The process and method by which you hear this story is why it's global. It's in the system. It is the system of the world. Do I need to say more on this? This is not just on sexual abuse, I guess, is the point for me. I see it. I see this thing everywhere. It works like this everywhere. And I see people you try to tell to, they just don't want to hear it. They can't. And I, partly, I can get it. No one can believe this sort of uh, um, oppression. And it, the, word, the word doesn't even cover how bad that is. But we start to, it starts to make sense more to me. This is the, the state of the world. This is why we see what we do and why it is we need to step up. Why and what, how are we going to do that? But we need the evidence. Again, remember, this is beyond, this statement is really nice that way. It says we can now state that sentiment as fact, not opinion. How many times will I tell you do not pro progress with an opinion? Go find the facts. Go find the supporting law. State it in a nice summary, bullet point way if you need to to start and then supplement the, the proof of that. If you have to, go ahead and do that. But you speak from the facts, not opinion. Here they are, the, the group of the UN saying this is what they do. If you had any doubts, folks, if you needed any more support, this is what they do. And I'm telling you, anybody who's adopted sustainable development does this. And under the cover of rule o law, folks, it's the cover of atrocity. It's a weapon. It's a blunt instrument of power. Rule of law is wielded to exploit the most vulnerable population in the crisis around us, around the world. Did I just do make an improper imposition? by adding the word rule of law as the subject matter here instead of sexual abuse, for food, for aid, people in power, the lowly soldier on the, on the uh, standing out there with the bag of food sees a little girl, a little boy, a mother, a father. What about all the United, the United States and what they did to people, the torture they did to their moms with the kids, uh, threatening the kids and what they did to the mothers. The United States troops did this. You think it's, uh, oh, the white knights of the United States? No. This is the method of oppression of the world. And it's stated right here. And I can apply this to about everything I see that's now certainly public-private partnershiping or private par uh, organizations that are public agencies like the Bar Association. Can I say that again? Aid work? Let me see. The rule of law is not a vehicle of charity. In this case, not benefits or help or justice, but is in a very real sense a cover for atrocity. The rule of law is a weapon, a blunt instrument of power that is wielded to exploit the most vulnerable populations in crisis around the world. The rule of law exploits ignorance, folks. It exploits even those that have the knowledge. Remember, Luke 11.52, what does it say about having the key of knowledge and those that have the key of knowledge you hinder? The rule of law is one of these things. 
It's not just sexual here. This is a method of destruction of people. And they're destroyed for lack of the knowledge of it. They're destroyed for its transparency to them. They're destroyed because of their 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 willful cluelessness and or their apathetic cluelessness. Then finally that they will not act out against the atrocity that's a weapon. If you don't believe what I just told you is the world at war, and you're living in sustainable development in the United States of America as adopted as a policy, remember it's not law, a policy of the United States federal government. Their own admission says this is all a weapon. Is it maybe not so hard now to see when I saw them go extrajudicial in the United States as a statement that I went to crickets? Do you not see the connections? Do you not see the consistency with this response? This is a well-laid plan that's been going on for a long, long time by every organization you know that says they are of a controller power. And that includes the Vatican, that includes the governments, that includes the NGOs coming under the collar of the government authorities. That it comes under everybody that says, I'm going to, I'm, I'm here to help. Now let me go to one that comes to mind that I don't know of much evidence about uh, having any negative. I think it's the Salvation Army. You know, uh, looking through all kinds of things, I've never heard them much of a scandal. There could be one, maybe I didn't hear about it. But the, let's say the Salvation Army, I would have to say maybe, let's, without, until I had more knowledge, I'd stick them as one in the world that may actually be a charity that helps. It doesn't take advantage somewhere. It isn't working tied in with the government with special programs and does certain things in special ways to really undermine us. So there, there might be a few out there. For the most part, they aren't. They are what we, you think it's, you call it the deep state. No, it's right in your face. This is how it works. The deep state is your ignorance to the fact of the, the psychopaths and the, and the, control of psychopaths and their methods in the world that are right in your face. And if you think that I'm uh, just blowing smoke, in my opinion, I've got a lawsuit with my name on it and my colleague's name on it and the Jefferson Mining District's name on it to show you in 2013 we, we exposed it. We nailed them. Is anybody going to look? No, i got the same problem with everybody being clueless and apathetic. Is the system going to recognize it? Absolutely not. That's the government. But that's not for, that's not for them anyway. They're the occupier. What is the international law? But the people finding themselves under that oppression has to throw it off. Yeah, you have to throw it off. I didn't make any of this up, folks. I'm just trying to tell you this is what is expected. And this is a nat natural law. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's natural that if you want something not to affect you, you consent to its continued imposition when you're not throwing it off. And that may come at a serious cost, your life. Your way of life is now at threat. What is your life worth then? 3M knew about dangers of PFOA and PFOS decades ago. Internal documents show another revealing. It takes time. Why this stuff, why we're so behind the scenes is because this truth takes time. We were talking about this before. We were talking about this stuff, this, these, these, uh, these documents, I mean, excuse me, these chemicals in the, in, in the, they're now all over the place. They're now in our systems. They're now affecting us. The government, the natural, uh, the, the Environmental Protection Agency was involved in allowing this stuff because they're fraudulently given information. What about the UN? Do you think the UN admitting to this makes them a nice organization now? This is why it's just, it's not a joke, but I have to use the word joke. I don't know what word is bad enough to put on these people. This is a systemic thing. It's a systemic harm. It's not about what we see. And it's not about us dis disregarding what we see. It's about these people are going to be there whether or not we make a decision because we're not acting. They continue. News that the EPA, Environmental Pol Protection Agency, pressured the federal agency for toxic substances and disease registry to suppress a study showing PFAS AS chemicals to be even more dangerous than previously thought drew outrage this spring. Who cares? What outrage? Everybody's so outraged, but no one does anything. So it's worse than we were told. It's worse than I reported just a few weeks ago on this 
uh, on these materials. They're everywhere. They're ubiquitous now. There weren't supposed to be any of that. And none of us understood the process of the administrative imposition in order to pre present this and shut that down in the in the agenda side. Uh, excuse me, the agency, yeah, the agenda agency side, so that we didn't bring jeopardy to ourselves and we saved, helped save ourselves and others around us. Again, to me, this is all the self-inflicted wound. Am I happy and glad that we have to do this? No, but because we don't have a control right now, we have to. Otherwise, it's going to steamroll us. We're being part of the, the the big snowball coming down with all this climate change and global warming. Again, M-A-N-N caused climate change. It was an invention. But it's all based in this fraud, and it's und it's undisclosed to us. And then it finally gets disclosed. And I'm saying, here's more evidence. Those of you that think this is important, you want you want to get this stuff out of your environment, you have to step up because it's not going to do it on its own. More evidence behind the woodshed. Is, again, it's not about opinion. We've got to find the evidence and find the right way to frame the condition to put it back in against these psychopaths that think that again the revolving door in the United States is. Is you go in from industry to the government, and you come back out, you do your thing, you come back out, and then you get the perks. Um, but in the meantime, billions and billions of dollars are, are, are funneled through comp companies uh, that are harming you and your environment. And if this is all about saving the environment, you think they'd want to protect you? That's not making sense, didn't it? Because they're not. So something else is up. Now, again, I could read all this stuff. It's important that you do read all this stuff. It tells you, gives you a history and all that's going on. It explains how they got through this. That's as important to be able to reassert the fraud against what their decisions are today, is to know how they got there and explain that you're not going to allow that to continue to happen. Are you are you familiar with how to do that? Absolutely not. I know that. I, you're not familiar with it, so it's 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 daunting. Entering back into this, but they they did it this way in order to keep it from you, and so that you wouldn't respond. That that insult alone should get you fired up, but I don't know why it doesn't. Except for the people who are apathetic, and I don't know. That's just us not wanting to do what we need to do. I guess I'd rather not. So 3M, Hyden, the corporate. You're not having evidence. You find all these corporations that lied. Now we can get rid of that presumption that they're telling the truth, folks. Which is I telling you, they're that's killing us inside the agencies. Uh, the agency's deference. You start showing that corporation after corporation has lied to the agencies and the agencies have taken it, even in the most honest sense, they were gullible to take it and they failed their duty to double check for sure. And then you show the evidence of the harm and they still failed to act. Now you're getting, now we finally get to the point where we might actually have something you can do. It's not just your opinion that they're doing wrong. You have to lay the table to have the feast. Another Monsatan environmental disaster, now Slayer. And glyphosate has poisoned the Great Lakes. For those of you living up there and seeing the water turn green, maybe you know now why. It's an interesting dynamic that it is. The thing about glyphosate is they said it wasn't supposed to be persistent. This condition may not be persistence, but it, what it is is what glyphosate does. It's a mineral dis sol sol uh, solvent, essentially. It's a scale remover for the insides of boilers. It's meant to get rid of mineralization. What do you think when you overspray it on a land, but that it will take all the mineralization in your soil, and on the first heavy rains, it will wash it into your, uh, into your reservoirs? Well, Lake Erie is a big reservoir, and they're finding problems now with a product that wasn't supposed to have this kind of an effect, and now they're finding out it is. Do you care? I, I, I get this feeling. People, oh yeah, it's over there. It doesn't. I don't matter. What can I do about it? Well, I don't know. Nothing, I guess. If you're not going to do nothing about it, but don't don't keep typing in the in the chats and don't be sending emails and don't forward emails and don't complain and don't scream and yell anymore about the problem when it could be solved. You could gather that up and go start to solve it. Learn what it takes. Learn how far ahead of the of them of us they are in this uh, administrative nonsense. Anyway, it explains how this glyphosate is working, and it's not just as a so-called poison. It's actually what it does, and it's a uh, it's talking about phosphate. Well, let me offer something else. There's lakes. Uh, you know, lakes are a, a reason why they're pulled up water is because they've got they got an impervious impervious uh, basin. 
and they catch. Well, that, that's usually rock, and that rock can have phosphates in it. So before you go railing that Mon Satan did anything with glyphosate, you got to go make sure that the rock that's underneath isn't contributing as well and remove that because there's places around that will have this uh, this greening, this algae algification, and it, it will uh, it's caused by the natural ground. Remember, arsenic in water is not necessarily something you can do anything about because it's in the ground. It's in there. It's coming through your water because it's coming through the rock. Now, I'm not going to give Mon Satan a, a, a lift here. I'm saying, though, make sure you have your facts and understand the condition. Nature has its own way of doing things. But this is now a study that shows it's directly affected by what it does to the soil and the minerals. And phosphorus is a problem. And in this case, it's enhanced. So no one looked at the impacts, did they? No one looked at the cumulative impacts. Whatever the whatever they said in the beginning, even if it wasn't a lie, is now to be found different, is how you re-engage this to stop this. Because this is your water supply, folks. If there's that much runoff doing this much stuff, this much, um, I can't remember the word for it, whatever, breaking it down, this is breaking down other things as well. This is persisting in the water supply. And this is at a level they can't get rid of. And then they start raising those bottom standards because, remember, I told you these regulations have to watch out. that They can't make it absolute because there's no perfect nature. Why the Clean Water Act becomes an act to dirty water just a little bit. And that's legal. Again, we can go on, I can go on and on. It's like coming up. I told you before, water quality, you weren't being told. How many years ago did I tell you? Oh, they're talking about Flint, but be careful. It's nationwide. Why? Because I know about the actual interpretation of the Clean Water Act. I know how the, uh, in part, I don't know about recently, 20-something 20, 20 years ago, looking and investigating water water treatment plants, having to write a budget for, for, in part for one, understanding what the costs were, looking at the processes to see what there was necessity to do, what might be able to be adjusted. I found out some of the particulars, and they don't test for a lot of this stuff. And they can't afford to. And so that's given over as a waiver. And that you'll never be told about. And so I told you, watch out the rest of this country. You might hear a place here, a place there, but it's everywhere. What have you heard in, since I told you that years ago? It's everywhere. And the same problems keep popping up everywhere else. It's it's consistent. Florida's algae Algae problem, algae, a problem, stems from decades of Lake Okeechobee pollution. Well, what is it? It's, it's phosphorus from fertilizer. Again, look to see whether it's not naturally coming out of the stone, the limestone over there, or whatever that's on the base of Florida. But find, understand that there's an over-application in the, in the agricultural field, in the agricultural mark, um production side. The stuff isn't contained. Whatever the companies are saying about its application and its and its checking about that isn't so con, isn't co not causing an impact. Apparently these algae boom uh, algae blooms are pretty problematic. Those are impacts. Now, I don't know why people aren't collecting it up and eating them, but it, it's up not up to me, is it? Point is we have People are doing things, and we're not adjusting it in the proper ways. We're letting companies not disclose things, letting agencies make decisions, not understanding the dynamic of the of the pollution side that they get to pollute so much, and then trying to address the issue. When we do it that way, we're not gonna we're not gonna be effective in what we do. It's gonna sound like a big frustration. Like I was telling you before about the fire. We're in water now. We we're in fire before. I'm going to say fire and water this time. Maybe that'll be the good, maybe that'll be something I can uh, title this broadcast as I make that up too. The, the, the fire is based on its, the least, the bottom line, the bottom, setting the bar at the bottom where no policy is. The other side of the problem is how stringent do you make the, the policy of, of regulation before it's not cost effective or beyond technology? There is that balance. This may be a multifaceted approach. It takes someone with watershed uh, knowledge, 
and I would say not current watershed knowledge because the universities are now, now promoting sustainable development watershed knowledge, which is agenda-driven, not science and f- reality-driven. And so we have another problem right in there. And uh, not one of us can solve all that. We just have to have an understanding about it. And as we guide what we, uh, we contribute, we guide the elimination of all that's not working for us at the, at the new policy considerations. But Florida has a phosphorus problem, okay? So this is a general condition. And this is speaking to the quality of your water, folks. And I, again, you know, you sat back, you don't listen, I mean, you listen, but you don't, you don't underappreciate. This is a problem coming to wherever you all are. In, in particular, the urban areas. The places that are all developed for you, stack them and pack them. We already heard the problems of the pharmaceuticals in the water. You can't get rid of that right now. There's no technology that I've known, that I know of right now, that would efficiently remove that. There's some, but they're not that efficient quite yet. In other words, you can't get the throughput for what it can do. And then you have the problem that they don't really want to solve the problem. As I've told you this before as well. One of my colleagues has a zeolite deposit. And that, that zeolite will trap toxins, and the EPA will not uh, utilize that product because it'll fix their problem. Because the problem, what the, the EPA doesn't do, it doesn't fix problems. It continues problems. Why? Because there's a money stream funding that they can actually make so-called economy through as they continue to manage the problem, not end it. It's the same thing as the, as the med- medical profession. Uh, we don't We don't cure anything. We treat it. And so the pharma and biological sciences love that. Hospitals love that. Not good for you, but it's not about that. See, this is, again, another proof. What about your pets? Goes on and on and on. Dog owners, a PSA for all y'all that have dogs. Watch out for grain-free pet foods containing legumes or potatoes as the main ingredient. So here we have, a, you know, a response in nature. Then we have what we do for ourselves and what we do for our pets. And we rely on another company, the same companies that won't disclose any, that they rely on other companies that won't disclose this stuff to the government. That's no good. They put these materials together. Uh, they put this so-called science, nutrition science together, and they give you a product. Well, this time now, if you have a dog, and you have a dog food that has the primary main ingredients, that's the first and the second, they say by this article, being a legume or potatoes, beans and lentils, other legumes, that things like that, that they may not be giving the pet an amino acid and it may be causing health problems. The amino acid in this case is taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E, and I found it fascinating. Didn't realize it was quite, it was such the the integrated uh, amino acid, but it's not a, it's not a, Oh, what's it called, darn it? All these words are losing my mind here. It's made by the body. It's not an essential amino acid where you don't make it by the body that you have to get it from your sources. It's actually made by the body. But these these uh, legumes don't provide provide that for them. And so, uh, word to the wise, look at your dog food bags. If you see that there's, um, again, Peas, lentils, legumes, potatoes, as the first, one of the first two you may want to consider, reconsider, research, at least research the viability of what this article is telling us. You can find it in the blogcast or after or research it for yourself and typing it in. Uh, research for your, uh, your, your um, fur baby whether or not that's going to be good enough for it. Uh, cats uh, don't, do the, don't do well on this either, but uh, with, this, with this taurine problem. And the, you get it typically from meat. So... So anyway, uh, be careful on the dog food. We rely a lot on government. We rely a lot on what we're told. Uh, we rely a lot on what governments tell us. We have evidence over and over. They're not telling us the truth. And uh, maybe even in the best even in the best interested companies, they could be led to be making products that they don't know. We're all really ignorant here. You realize how ignorant we are about what we do. We make artificial environments around us and we're not necessarily able to keep track if we can't even keep up with well, I mean, the thought that occurs to me if we can't even keep up with what the needs of a dog are and know it ahead of time that this even became a problem how the heck we model the climate i'm not a tractor 
how Florida farm workers took on the fast food giants and won. Uh, reading this article, what can we do? What is it? It's up to us, folks. Now, I told you to go look at your pet food bag and look and see if there's those things. And if there's those things, you might want to consider researching and see if maybe you want to change that to a better product. There's a whole thing around dog food. It's kind of fascinating. I didn't realize how uh, how how problematic that can be. And that that's, again, our creation of artificial environments. Our promotion of environments that are not real. Our handing over to those that will fabricate those environments. In this case, going to the beginning of the broadcast, the Forest Service. Fabricating this thing where they say that the restoration tool of choice is fire. I don't know why anybody doesn't stop and think about that phrase and really think about that. But this is what we guide ourselves in. And at some point it comes to you. You're affected and you have to do it. The declaration, I am not a tractor, happened to be about Florida farm workers who uh, were wanted, essentially, they just wanted a penny per pound more, and they had to fight for a penny per pound more for the workers to get. But they did. And this story goes and tells us a thing. They said, the takeaway lesson, the take-home lesson here is what I, what I keyed in on. And I want you to key on it because it's what I've been telling you really over and over. Now, this is specific to their problem. Again, their problem. And understand what the, the title says. I'm not a tractor. Their decisions were made as if the, the farm worker was a machine. And now let's extend that a little bit over to your AI and your robots and all this other stuff and how the technocrats are viewing you as some carbon pollution unit while they in the same time say that an, environment, uh, an electrical vehicle is clean, green, At the same time, they'll say that a hydrogen for, for hydrogen-powered unit that creates a, through a fuel cell is not green. Uh, fascinating. It's a polluter now of the of the what the the biggest greenhouse gas if climate change was the theory that worked. Water. Now, the take-home lessons for some group of people standing up for one cent a pound against the major corporations was real change has to come from workers themselves. It can't be led or forced from the outside. To change systems, you need to understand them. To gain allies, you must have a cohesive, consistent, compelling story. Leaders must have courage, objectivity, creativity, and persistence. I don't know how that isn't what I've been saying over and over. Who's the leader in this case? It's you. Who's the worker? If you don't think you're considered to be the human resource, it's you. And what do you need? You need to understand them. As I keep telling you, the know the battlefield. I say it in slightly different terms. Well, they, it comes out, but the point is, is this is highly consistent with what we the people need to do. You can't chat, you can't talk, you can't argue with me, you can't uh, think you know it all, you can't uh, just t uh, get on the internet, post a website, you can't just complain, you can't go stand out in the street and riot, you can't, that doesn't do it. You have to understand what you're up against, you have to gain your allies on that situation, you have to explain it and tell it in a way that, you, that they understand, and then you have to go after it and be persistent. Great list. Real change has to come from you. It can't be led or forced from the outside. What is the sustainable development crew but the outside force that's destroying you? How do you stop it? You have to do it. To change that system, you need to understand it. You also need to understand the one that was created so you embrace it. Not, def not, not destroy it, not de deny it. I'm not talking about the crime within the structure. I'm talking about the objective basis that provides that you have the ability to do what you do. To gain allies is the, another key. We can't do it ourselves. I tell you, this has become bigger than us. It's a global attack. We're infiltrated and surrounded. If you didn't get that when I told you the rule of law was this weapon, and uh, what I've been telling you about the infiltration and surroundings of what you are involved in, the environment you've been born into, and didn't get that, please listen a little bit closer. You need to understand that. 
You need to then gain allies and cohesive, consistent, and compelling, which means we we cannot be in argument with ourselves. And we have to understand the re- compelling, the reason why we're here doing that, not fight amongst ourselves. Focus on that, not ourselves, not our distinctions, not our differences. And be our own leader, if you will. Run, run our own intention. Well, as I say, you find the wrong, you need to be right. That's you being the leader. You coming and you run with courage, if I, we could put it. I, I feel embarrassed a bit just saying, oh, we've got to run courage. I, I think it just comes with it. But yes, it's a good word. You've got to have courage and step forward. You've got to have courage to be able to defend the, the position or not learn how not to step, step aside while they fall on their face and then take a step forward. Do what it needs to do. Have the this, this courage to be there to do that. Objectivity. What's the black and white in your eyes I keep talking about? Don't run from your opinion. Don't run from a subjective thing that can be argued with and beat down. Be creative. What I said about being fluid in the battlefield. And persistent. You can't give up. I've said every one of those things. Maybe I am a Tony Robbins. I just don't have the delivery, folks. Anyway, so this is a good good article. This tells us we have a problem. There's people out there, the farm workers. I'm almost sure that the most of those weren't 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 Americans, folks. They're likely a whole bunch of immigrants. Okay, maybe I insulted a few of you, but I don't care. Some people stood up. Likely they were some people that came from another country, and likely they did do the fight. Something that not many Americans would do. And yet you have the core of four points that is all that it takes. And you are now speaking of what the principles are that I just, I perpetually tell you behind the woodshed need to be done. But it starts out with the change coming from you. That isn't an argument. That isn't uh, arguing over a position or over favoritism, over an ism, over an ist. No, it's what what is our... What's the problem? What what under what found what's the foundation that that problem survives on, and how do we take it out? And that's our focus. And some of us will be able to work on certain. Our allies will work together on that, and some will have different ideas on what needs to be fixed, and they'll have to be working on there with their allies. But we will have to be working, and we'll have to be working with allies, and we will have to be doing it in persistence, with courage, objectivity, and creativity, because the battlefield is a moving thing. It's a moving target. What they are, it's a it's an amoeba that keeps moving around, and a chameleon. It has camouflage. That's all I've been talking about today. And it's done Disinform- misinformation, disinformation, non-disclosure, fraud is in either commission or omission is all the tools and weapons. So what else do people do? You can stand up again. It starts with you. So we got to a place where the most oppressive, apparently the most oppressive place in the planet for uh, social uh, things is China. What are those people doing? Let's take examples from people. Even when it's most oppressed, do people still function? Do they die? Do they lay down and die? No. Chinese citizens are using blockchain to warn each other over unsafe vaccines. Oh, interesting new thought about blockchain. No, your evidence is now put in a place as permanence on a ledger. I hope they don't break the code for that. I guess they could get in it if they wanted to. But here you have Chinese citizens are using the blockchain to warn each other about unsafe vaccines, where you find the problem we've been talking about behind the woodshed of China being the producer of the vaccines you use in the world, in the United States, the CDC has agreed, their standards are not good, even the Chinese citizens are subject to that, and they found a way around the blockade by using blockchain. I thought that was pretty fascinating. China is in the midst of vaccine scandal. This weekend, news broke that the drug manufacturer, Cheng Chun, Chang Chen, Biotechnical, was selling an unsafe vaccine, was selling unsafe vaccines, causing an uproar amongst Chinese citizens. Uh, a blogger writing under the nom, nom de plume, Beast, was one of the first to break the story. An investigative article then pub- published on the topic of went viral on the WeChat social network. So if you thought my story last week was just some hype and thing, it's actually people are also now confirmed that they're in China, they're knowledgeable, and they want... Uh, they're starting to spread the word. Chinese internet monitors deleted the story within hours and quickly removed any reposts. Here's your shadow banning if you, you want to get in the West. They just do it outright in China. That's your future. 
However, Internet users figured out a way to share the story that will keep it permanently out of reach of these monitors by adding it to a blockchain. Now, what did I just did that this perfect in me with you? What I've said: if you can find a way to take what you need and put it in blockchain and privatize it so it has no way access from the public, it will work. And here's the example of that on pieces of information. I won't go on. It talks about more of this stuff. Very interesting. The adaption that we have, the power that we have as the people to come with up with answers, is really quickly. And then if we apply those four standard, those four, those four um, bullet points that I just spoke of, of how the farm workers work, and we start applying it in our life on these things of, that are against us that one day could come and burn our house or poison our water or poison our, 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 treat, uh, our treatments or medi- our real medical treatments that we need, uh, we are going to be standing a lot, a lot stronger, I think. And we're going to have a lot faster response about it. And it won't, it won't be able to be made hidden. It won't, it won't be transparent to us anymore. So uh, what do people do? They get together and figure it out. Here's an evidence. In the most oppressive uh, uh, social network system in China, they're still getting around it. And this is where the blockchain starts to shine. And I think it's more of an evidence that I told you before would have to be used. The blockchain has to be privatized and impenetrable. And then it can work. Not Not as the promotions that they're telling us, which is the promotions to utilize to empower the technocrat. In this case, it becomes the government by extension. Remember that other article that I just read to you earlier, it said the government, the CFR article, the governments are embracing this. This is the problem. This is the hidden problem that people may argue with me over this blockchain, over what I say, over the coding, over the policies, over what, how you do it. People are arguing over it, but the truth is sitting right there for us to see if you look Read between the lines, see the transparent, and understand them. Have the magic decoder ring, whatever it takes for you to see it. And you'll get it by starting applying those four bullet points in the other. Uh, don't be the farm tractor, folks. Be those that would resist and how they did it. Go read that article. It's a short article. I, mean, I could have read it in, in seconds, I guess. What do you do for yourself? Okay, we talked about medicine. We talked about the vaccines. What do you do for yourself? Each one of you. This is something I used to do. I guess I thought about maybe doing it another one. They're not that difficult. You just got to do it. Periodic fasting starves cisplatin-resistant cancers to death. So who would have thunk it, folks? It's fast. And we're admonished to do fast regularly. And I used to do them more. And, in fact, I tested them. I wanted to do a fast for quite a long time, actually. You live, you can exist for a long time. And interesting things happen. I, I would encourage people to, if you haven't, to get into the mindset for it. But do it with, with, a, with an intention. But fasting now has been found to kill certain cancers. And it is certain. Look at what this is. Treatment of cancers with cytotoxic agents, cisplatin, frequently evokes resistance accompanied by rewiring of metabolic pathways, limiting its clinical use. Here we have another non-disclosed, or if you look at the product addict sheet, it said it'll do this. You don't realize it's actually destroying your system to try and, and, and solve a problem. But you realize when they do that, they have side effects, they're going to sell you more. So, But here's a fasting, simple fasting can go after a particular type of cancer. Now, this is the one they studied. They call this fasting a nutritional anti-cancer intervention, which I found fascinating. The nutrition, by fasting, I guess you get nutrition to fight cancer, by fasting. That shows you that the terminology is kind of odd, but it it also made me think about how this inversion of what's going on, how they've obstructed what actually has to happen, and their language flipped, and so it makes all this other stuff sound kind of dumb. How, How do you have a nutritional input when you're fasting. Now, go look at what fasting does. and Maybe you'll start to see what's going on. Uh, so, the interesting story. Uh, these are platinum-based gr- uh, drugs. Cisplatin. Platinum. They tell you in the name. This is uh, not... Uh, this works. Uh, and platinum is an interesting catalyst. So, that's what I was fascinating about this. That the imposition of this catalyst can actually cause harm in your system. Rewiring your pathways is what a catalyst does. But it's not working for you. 
And so if you want to stop this particular type of cancer, it's in your lung or the adenocarcinoma. Maybe take a fast, folks. Maybe it's as simple as that. What do you do for yourself? What do you do together? What's your allies? How persistent are you? What knowledge? Do you understand the enemy? All these things I've been telling you come over and over and over again. We're told now getting to some healthy things. They start telling you the, the, the treatment, association of statins, exposure with histological conf histology, confirmed idiopathic inflammatory my myosit myositis in an Australian population. I found this fascinating. Only Australians must be affected by this. Why? The point is these statins are really seriously problematic. And there's a lot of information on them why and how. And those of you that are on them, a lot of my listeners must be old or elder, and you're going to be in, you're either in these or they're going to be given to you. Understand the, the, the dangers. This treatment is to prolong or to profit from the problem. And we have evidence again. Whatever they haven't disclosed in the past is coming out now. So what we get into cancers, we can do fasting, we can inflammatory conditions are really the main killer it seems, one of the main killers of people over time, uh, inflammation in the body, reducing that is all important. In fact, I was told, I think by two doctors, uh, a simple aspirin, reducing inflammation reduces the, the, the incidence of, I think, I think it was heart attack, by 50%. Simple little aspirin which would probably not be able to be, if it was invented today, probably couldn't pass because it would help. But you go if you go suck on a poplar bark for a while. you got, got the same type of stuff in there. It's, just get a bunch of poplar bark and suck on it for a while. That'll give you, that'll give you your aspirin. But anyway, aspirin uh, it reduces inflammation. It's about inflammation in the body, folks. The body creates this as a, a defense mechanism. When it does that and you interfere with the pathways for doing that, uh, you can also cause additional problems. But here's statins, another story about statins not being so good. So do you agree? Do you, do you believe what you're told or do you have to take responsibility? Is it you having to take responsibility and then go and getting yourself to knowledgeable of the underlying condition that's, uh, that you're being told about that could be being told wrong? And going back to the cancer and the treatment by simply fasting. Here's another thing now for those of you in New York. New York City officially ends... Prosecution of marijuana possession and use. So those of you that are there, apparently you're being prosecuted by marijuana for medical use. Here's a story that says, that at least in New York City, they're no longer going to do the possession and use. But remember, possession is attached to market, uh, marketing, sales. At, at any rate, so you, those of you in you, fasting doesn't work, maybe while you're fasting, maybe you try to see if cannabis may help that type of a cancer. Maybe a concerted effort on there may stop that for you. Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance announced on Tuesday, I thought that was an old guy, that his, his office is no longer going to prosecute. But this is a, be careful on this one. This is on the discretion of the prosecutor, which can change. And this is what you have to get rid of. This is like a de policy dis decriminalization. You have to non-criminalize it. Get rid of the criminalization of it. Work now, and those of you in New York, to this city, to do that. Use the momentum, use the evidence of it, find out why this is the case. They might even tell in this story, I can't remember right now. But utilize this to start pushing that forward so that people have access to this medical a plant, as simply as you might suck on a poplar bark or not take statins or just go on a fast. Folks. How about that? We just go on a fast. Isn't that interesting? And come off your fast nice and learn how to come off your fast so that you don't harm yourself and you don't, you don't overwhelm your system. There's a good way to do that. But at any rate, thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said inspired you. Hopefully, get involved, look a little deeper, uh, roll up your sleeves. It's up to us to do it and work together to do it. We've heard that today over and over. Don't let them burn you out or, or poison you out. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com, uh, everything there behind the scenes and uh, what you do uh, to uh, keep the place going. Uh, freedomsnetwork.com, need your donations, folks. It's another social network, censorship-free for you all. Uh, thank you again for the anomaly on uh, UCYD t TV. We're we're, uh, we're 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 one of the live. We're keeping the lights on just a little bit longer, I suppose, uh, because of anomaly in the connection. And I'm here all the time, folks, and that's how we got connected. And uh, Jules is great enough to run the the broadcast at UCY.TV. But thank you very much. I'll be here next week. Tech diffs are nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass. <laughs>